I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. This video is one in a series that I'm doing with Ryan Harrell of MiniQuad Test Bench, where we go through every single one of the BL Heli 32 options, describe what they do, and most importantly, when you might want to change them. In this video, we're talking about motor timing. So if you've always wondered, what, what is motor timing and should I change it? This is the video for you. Check the video description down below for the playlist in which we go over all of the BLA32 options, yes, every single one of them. It took like an hour, and that's why this is just one. We, I'm splitting it up. If that playlist has some private videos, that just means they haven't been released yet. They're coming out one one at a time. Eventually, they'll all be out. Hey, you know, I got to do what I got to do. I can't dump an hour of content on you at once. Can I? Could I do that? Anyway, the next one I think people are curious about and want to know if they should tweak it is probably timing, motor timing. Sure. sure. So... Can we get a can we get a like a one minute description of what motor timing is? Because we could do a I'll whole video on motor timing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so motor timing has to do with how far in advance of when the magnet is crossing that peak point in the stator, mm -hmm. the um, the ESC actually opens the fets. So it's trying to predict at what point that what's called the zero crossing happens. So the the higher the timing, the further in advance of that. Um, it's it's opening the FETs. The longer the FETs are on during the transition phase, mm -hmm. and so the more current is pushed through the stators, um, the higher the torque as a result because current and torque are directly <laughs> proportional. So it just it's basically it's it's burning more energy and creating more torque at the cost of or, or you know at the cost of energy. Here's here's the analogy. Tell me if you like this analogy or if it's completely off base. Imagine that you are a parent and your kid is on one of those mm -hmm. merry-go-rounds. And you're going to reach out, you're going to grab the bar, and you're going to sling it, mm -hmm. right? With a higher timing, you're sort of reaching, you're grabbing the bar sooner and pulling sooner. Yeah. And With then, a lower yeah. timing, you're, you're kind of grabbing the bar here, and you're just going... <laughs> right, right. But there's more to it than... The, the physical spacing it has to do with, like, how fast the FETs open up. Right. With, with slower yep. FETs, you might need to open the FETs mm -hmm. sooner. Etc. There's yeah, a lot going on there, and it has to do with how long it takes the current to propagate through the coil. The coil, which is yeah. impacted by impedance and a lot of other factors, so resistance of the coil, all of those things. The the all of the like a, a low resistance coil is gonna is gonna be okay with um, with uh, lower timing than than a higher resistance coil that takes longer to spin up. But there's there's a lot of factors involved. Even the magnet strength plays a role because um, it has to do with how you know how quickly the magnet is reacting to the coil. So there's there's lots of factors in there. Generally speaking, you're safe. You're safer going higher mm -hmm. than not going higher, because okay. a higher timing is inherently more resistant to desync than a lower timing. So, so it's basically it's better to 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 overshoot on timing than to undershoot. Here's one of the points I like to make about timing. If you if you go to some areas like if you're running really unusual motors. Mm -hmm. Or if it, it, in the old days when ESCs were not as capable as they are today, you would have a desync and you would change the timing and it would fix the desync. Right. I feel really confident that if you're getting desyncs on really any like five inch, six inch typical mm -hmm. mini quad motor, something's broke. You right. don't. You're not going to fix that. The timing makes a difference in the motor's performance, mm -hmm. but it shouldn't make a difference of whether the motor does or doesn't spin. If your motor doesn't spin, right. it's probably broke. What effect does changing timing have? Going, you said going to high timing is less likely to create desyncs. Mm -hmm. It also it increases torque a little bit, increases power. Um, I've run back-to-back -back tests on, on my thrust stand, like just changing um, a couple of pr uh, parameters, and we'll talk about one of the others here in a little in a okay. little bit. But um, increasing timing always increases power. Um, and and. Amps, right? So and amps. So it's decreasing efficiency a little bit, increasing power a little. So bit. should racers always basically run high timing? I wouldn't see high running high doesn't really gain you anything. Uh, like you see more gains going from mid range to like middle high. Yeah. Like what and the, in the default old days, is. Me, I think the default high. is like fifteen degrees. Yeah. But we could turn it up, and that's higher. So timing. thirty one is is pushing it. I I generally recommend around twenty three to twenty five. You start getting above twenty five, and you're seeing more efficiency loss without really a corresponding right. gain. Um, twenty twenty three twenty four is a good middle point. It gives you a good uh, range of power without sucking a whole ton of amps. Um, now, and at, at the highest timing points, you also run a little bit more of a risk of if the motor gets blocked, 
um, you know, you hit something, motor stops spinning while it's still being driven. Right. You run more risk of burning the motor or burning the ESC because it's dumping more current right. into those coils. So, and that's what makes it burn. So, right. like, just a little bit more resilience by going down to 24 without a whole lot of loss in power. And, you know, well, the default, I think, is 15, although I'm not 100% 16, sure. I think it 16. Might be 16. That makes sense. If 31 remember. is the max, right. 15, 16. Is there any reason you said turning it down might make desyncs more likely? Right. I would we, never turn it down. Never like, turn no, it down. Unless you're running large multipole, like, you know, motors. The, the, right. the only reason to turn it down is if you're running a different type of environment from a mini quad. Like, right. Okay. Basically, okay. any mini quad, I, I just automatically set it to 23 or 24 on every build. And I run, and if you turn it down here, all the way to the bottom, it gets to auto. Now, what's auto timing? So, auto timing will basically use the back. Uh, EMF mm -hmm. to try to predict the timing um, and because here's here's the thing that that it was not acknowledged a lot except mm -hmm. by motor d engineers and stuff the optimal timing isn't one fixed value it's right. different it's, at different as the motor spins correct. faster the timing can change because mm -hmm. it's physically moving faster correct. and you can and so a t so auto timing will try to like detect the right mm -hmm. timing for each RPM value that the motor is actually at correct. is that right correct okay so. I, I mean, you, you could kind that. of compare it a little bit of uh, to um, custom tunes in your engine control unit in your car. Love so it. if you like, auto would be kind of the stock tune. Like it's going to try to make the best prediction for the shift points in the car. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever it's going to it's going to make that prediction and try to make that work. Um, the th it's going to be more efficient than mm -hmm. manually setting the timing, and it's it's going to give you kind of a, a, a good middle ground. It's going to try and shoot for that that ideal point. Mm -hmm. What it's not going to do is going to give you the most power. So, right. um, and it's also not going to help you if you get into a desync situation, like, because it's going to like the auto algorithm can, can really get kind of confused. confused. If you, right. like if you smack a branch or stop a prop suddenly. Right. Right. Then. So I always run auto because I think that auto timing for a freestyle pilot who cares more about smoothness mm -hmm. than power, I think auto timing is, is is similar to PWM frequency in that it can solve some of the issues that mm -hmm. give you a little bit of jello or a little bit of vibration. I haven't done a whole lot of testing to prove that. Do you do you, am I am I on the right track or am um, I just imagining it? I I don't again I don't have a lot of data to, to back that up. Uh, the only thing I can tell you is that you do get reduced power by running auto timing. I, I, so yeah. you like it could be you know three or four percent reduction in power output. So a racer is going to want to take your advice to run maybe twenty four degrees sure. timing. Maybe a freestyle pilot can try auto, or maybe I'm just losing power with no benefit. I don't know. I, yeah, I, I, I just automatically set it to 23 because that's what I've always done. Okay. Me medium high was what I always ran back in the day, and I, okay. I, haven't, I haven't really seen any gains from running auto mm -hmm. myself, but that doesn't mean they're not there. That's why, I'm, that's why I love you. And that is going to bring us to the end of this video. But, of course, there's a whole lot of other BLH32 options, and Ryan and I will be covering every single one of them. Look down in the video description. There's a link to a playlist. And if some of those videos are private, it just means they haven't come out yet. There's like an hour of content here. So come back to the channel and eventually all of them will be released. And then you can uh, learn everything you want to know about BLLA32. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy flying.